What is up, YouTube? Welcome to Civic Minded. Today we are going to be adding a feature that was only reserved for, at the time of the 9th Gen Civic, the most premium Honda vehicles. I can only think of three that had it. And that is... Fully automatic windows, all around. And yes, they're auto up too. As you can see. And here. So I've seen forum posts about people who have looked into doing this mod, and most of them have said it cannot be done. Well, obviously that is not correct. It is a challenging modification to make, to put it mildly, but it is not impossible. So I'm going to give you a quick, and this is going to be the first in a three-part series of videos. In this one, I'm going to give you sort of a rundown of which parts of the car you need to change to make this work, and in two more videos I will explain how to change those parts. So usually when you're doing a mod, the first question you always ask is, is this something, is what I'm trying to add something that was available on this car? And that usually, and that usually gives you a good idea of how easy the mod is going to be. In this case, it was not. So the next thing you ask, were there cars produced by the same manufacturer that had this feature that could conceivably work in this car? And the answer is... Yeah. So there were three Honda vehicles that I know of that had automatic windows on all four made during the time of the 9th Gen Civic. They were the Acura MDX, the Acura RDX, and the Acura RLX. In order to get this to work, we need to basically change the entire power window system in this car to be, well, passable as the power window system from the MDX, the RDX, or the, R or the RLX. So, before we get into specifics here, I thought I'd give you guys a quick rundown of how the manual windows work in this car. This is a, this is a pretty common design used for manual windows. The 9th Gen Civic uses it. I, th I think a lot of cars with manual windows use it. It's simple, it gets the job done, it allows control from the driver's switch, and it's very cheap to, and, and easy to implement. So, that's what our cheap cars use. This is a circuit simulator applet uh, written in Java. You can find it online for free. I'll leave a link in the description. If you Google circuit simulator applet, it'll def you'll definitely see it. So, so this circuit here is a basic mock-up of what's inside the manual switches, basically. This squiggly part here is called a resistor, and that's standing in for a window motor. It's just an electrical load. It's, it's, a, it's the simplest electrical load there is. It's just resistance. So think of that as the motor. So these are the two wires that go out to the motor. We have three wires coming from the driver's window switch into the door. We have the positive 12 volts, and then we have two grounds, and you'll see why. And then the down and up are actually two different double throw switches. So double throw meaning you see how we have a common connection here, and then it can either connect to this ground or this power when we turn the simulation on. So just turn the simulation on, it's running. You see we have power and ground on both up and down buttons. So if I press up, you notice that the resistor is connected to power on the upside and ground on the downside, and current flows to the left. If I press down, it's just the opposite. We, have, we now have ground on the upside and power on the downside, so current flows to the right. So, so in a simple electric motor, that changes the direction. So that's how we get both up and down. And then we have two grounds here when we're not touching anything on the driver switch. If we press up on the driver switch, that ground becomes a power. The, the L means ground, the H means power, low and high. That's logic input. So. so if we turn the driver up on, you see we now have power there where we previously had a ground, and the motor moves up. Current flows to the left. Same thing if we do it on the downside. And uh, pressing the window lock switch will disconnect these grounds. So if we disconnect these grounds, oh yeah, the... Uh, Oh, okay. Program usually crashes when you do that, but if we disconnect those grounds, you see nothing happens. So, that's how that works. Simple, easy, cheap. And the fact that there are three wires going from the driver's switch to each window switch is actually beneficial for us, and I'll show you why. The automatic windows require some smarter controls. Those controllers are built into the switches we're going to be installing. Each switch requires power, ground, and communication with the driver's switch. Instead of using individual wires, the MDX uses what's known as a one-wire bus, so when the driver presses up on any of the switches in the driver's door, that signal is sent to the other switches as serial data. 
It's similar to the CAN bus, but a lot less standardized, and from the looks of it, much simpler. That means three wires need to connect to each switch from elsewhere in the car. And as shown in the previous clips, the manual window switches have three wires connected from elsewhere in the car, one power and two grounds. So the power is going to stay power, that comes from the fuse box, we're not going to need to mess with that, and we probably don't want to. One of the grounds is going to become the permanent ground, and the other needs to be that one wire bus from the driver's switch. The two window motor wires are going to stay the same as well. As you can see, in my rear left door here, five of the wires that go to the new switch go to the factory harness. This new connector with the four wires is for something known as a pulsar. So in order for automatic windows to work, the controller inside the switch has to know whether the window is moving and whether it is at the top or not. That is accomplished through what's known as a pulsar. I've also heard it referred to as an encoder, and I, I kind of use both terms interchangeably in this video series. Here I have my iPhone 4 oscilloscope connected to one of the pulsar lines in this window. When I roll the window up, pulses are generated to let the switch know that the window is moving. When the pulses stop, that means the window has reached the top and the motor stops automatically. For this to work, any motor that does not have a pulsar already needs to be replaced with a motor with one. The reason the controller needs to know whether the window is at the top is, well, I'll show you here. So here I have a pizza box in my driver's window. If I press up, you see the window went up and then it immediately changed direction once it squeezed the pizza box. So. That is what all four windows are going to need to do. So here's a quick summary of everything we're going to be changing per door that is being converted to automatic. So if you've got the sedan with an automatic driver window, you're going to be doing this in the front passenger and both back windows. If you've got the sedan with an auto down driver window, you're doing this in all four. First is the motor itself, obviously. We need to add the pulsers. I'll, I'll get into specifics for that next. Second, the harness that plugs into the motor. I'll leave a link to that in the description. It's the same shape as the stock harness, but it adds the extra four wires required for the pulsar in the middle between the two motor connectors. Unfortunately, you can't pin the stock connector, you gotta replace the whole thing, because the spots for the extra pins are blocked in the stock connectors. We'll be doing both the motor and the wiring harness in video number two. Third, we need to replace the window switches themselves with those from one of the Acuras mentioned earlier, MDX, RLX, or RDX. I would probably recommend the MDX, I don't think the ones from the RLX illuminate like those do, you can correct me if I'm wrong. If you've got the coupe, the switches you're going to want to use are from the 9th Gen Accord coupe or one of the Acura coupes from that era. Lastly, we need to replace the electrical connectors that plug into said switches because they are different. We'll cover all of that wiring stuff in video number 3. For doors that are automatic already, which is most likely just the driver's door, we'll only be changing the last two, switch and wiring harness. Additionally, in the driver's door, we need to run a few wires from the cabin. The new driver's window switch gets its illumination and key position data, as well as whether the doors are open or not, from the CAN bus. There are no CAN lines in the door from the factory, so we will need to add CAN lines. Alright, so for the motors, the fronts are going to be a bit easier on paper, so if you've got the coupe, you've got this easy. For the backs, we're going to have to get a bit crafty, but we'll get there. If you have the same front setup as I do, where you have a fully automatic up and down driver's window, you only need to replace the passenger motor. I thought that the driver's motor would fit the passenger side, but as it turns out, it doesn't. So, I ordered the driver's motor from a right-hand drive car, because in a left-hand drive car like mine, that's the passenger side. If you're in a right-hand drive car, get the left-hand drive driver's motor for your passenger side. Part number is up on screen. The regulator may be different, but the motor is exactly the same, and the electrical pinout is exactly the same, as you'll see in video number two. For the backs, uh, this, this could be a hit or miss for you. These are the stock rear window motors for the 9th Gen Civic, and unfortunately there is no motor with this form factor that has a pulsar. So what I did was I bought rear motors out of a 2014 Acura RLX. They have similar regulators, and they have the pulsar. Then, are you sitting down? Then, I 3D printed two parts to make them fit within the Civic window regulator. I printed a sprocket adapter, which attaches to the RLX motor sprocket and allows it to be used in the Civic regulator, and I printed a bracket that allows for the RLX motor to bolt into the Civic regulator because the bolt holes are different. You're not going to need to draw these parts yourselves, you're just going to need to 3D print them. I'll leave the models in the description in a Google Drive shared file. If you have access to a 3D printer, great. You're going to need to print two identical copies of the sprocket adapter for left and right, and two mirrored copies of the bracket. 
So when you load into your 3D print software, make two copies of the sprocket adapter, two copies of the bracket, and mirror one copy of the bracket over the X or Y axis. The sprocket adapters, I would definitely recommend printing those on their sides, because as I found out, the weakest point of any 3D print is the layer lines, and printing with the layer lines parallel to the torque required to move the window up and down caused the adapter to break the night I installed it. So print that on its side. Load your filament with the print head hot, send your G-code to the printer, you're good to go. If you do not have access to a 3D printer, fret not, you can still get these items printed. I'll leave a link in the description, actually I'll leave two links in the description to websites where you can send files such as these to get 3D printed and mailed to you. I would probably recommend JLC, the shipping is a bit slower but the finished product is much finer. I'll also leave one large model file with both parts in the recommended orientations. The one important note regarding 3D printing is, do not use PLA for either of these parts. It may be tempting, but don't do it. This is going to be in a hot car. PLA will melt and deform very easily. The material I would recommend is nylon, so you'll need a printer that can print nylon. There are videos out there on how to print with nylon if you've never done it before. If you can't do nylon, as I couldn't as th at the time of filming, you can also use ABS. Anything that's strong and won't melt in a hot car will work. This is, a, this is the sprocket adapter. This is going to go on over the sprocket on the RLX motor, just like that. And then this bolts into the Civic regulator. And then this will bolt on top. This might be backwards, but this will sit on top of the RLX motor. And yes, it is backwards. No, wait. Hang on. And then this piece will bolt into the RLX motor. As you can see, these three bolt holes line up. And then these three bolt holes are going to bolt into the Civic Regulator. So you'll this is essentially how we're going to change the shape of the window motor to work in the Civic. So why don't we put this together? For that we can use, uh, we're just going to use regular nuts and bolts for that. You can get them from an auto parts store, you can get them from Lowe's. Uh, my recommendation would be to stick with the threading that the stock setup uses. So M5-.80, these are both M5-.80, a bolt I recommend to be 30 millimeters long. And here, here's the bad part. The, uh, on the Civic, the window motor is threaded, and on the RLX, the window regulator is threaded. Well, we're using the RLX motor and the C Civic regulator, so nothing's threaded, so we gotta have nuts for everything. So, so all we gotta do, really, is line these bolts up just like this. Uh, this. This one here is for the Civic motor. You may notice it's depressed a bit. I would recommend getting a bolt in there first, and I'll show you that. Just get it in there, in there like that, because otherwise it's going to be damn near impossible to get in because you'll have to squeeze it. it you, you just can't do it. So get bolts in the three holes that line up. Uh, get them nutted on. Use a... These bolts are 8mm, so use an 8mm socket, or I, if you got Imperial, this is 5 16 of an inch. And uh, I might recommend an open-ended wrench, especially for this one, just because you won't be able to... Well, this one goes into the regulator, so we'll do it later. But use whatever you can to get these tightened. Don't make them too tight. I'll show you what that looks like. I would recommend that you, apart from this one, get your bolts in like this because the window and door panel are going to be here. You don't want any collision issues. So this is going to be toward the back of the door. You're not going to have any collision issues there. So just see we got that bolt in there. We're going to add a nut there. We'll do that for all three of them that line up. Here's what that looks like. Uh, don't tighten them all the way all at the same time. Leave them all kind of loose so you can adjust this as needed. So I think I got it pretty good straight and I also wrote an R here because this is the right side. So keep track of that. Also, don't make it too tight or you could strain the motor more than you need to. So yeah. So I believe this is now ready to go on the car. So in the next video, we will do that. Before I close out of this intro video, I just wanted to touch briefly on the subject of converting in the sedan just the front windows to automatic and leaving the rear windows manual, and if it's easier, since I know I'm going to get some questions about that. I would actually say it's harder, and here's why. So more than likely, you'd be pulling the switches from the 9th Gen Accord sedan. That uses the same data bus for the front passenger window, and that's why the coupe version works in the coupe. But the rear switches work in a completely different manner than anything we've discussed so far. Instead of the dual ground setup of the Civic, the switches get power and ground through their own relay and have individual wires for the up and down commands from the driver's switch. So that's four wires, then another one required for illumination. That would mean you would have to run, in addition to the can lines, six additional wires through the driver's door, and then three through each rear. If you want to try that, be my guest, but I will not be covering that in this video series. 
I guess alternatively you could create a custom circuit that makes it work with the dual ground setup, but I don't know, that may be more trouble than it's worth. It's, it, it may just be easier to print your sprocket adapters and convert everything to automatic. And with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and call this the end of part one. It has now been three weeks since I installed this mod. It has been working great. The weather has been perfect for it, so very happy with it, and uh, hopefully you guys will be too. Once again, it is not an easy mod by any stretch of the imagination, nor is it inexpensive, but if you do it, if, if you do decide to try it, it's I think the end result is well worth it. So in part two, we're going to discuss how to install the motors and motor wiring harnesses in the doors that require it. And in part three, we will discuss installing and wiring the switches and calibrating the system. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can feel free to leave a comment, shoot me a direct message, shoot me an email, aidenciviminded at gmail.com. And as always, drive safe, have fun, and I will see you in part two.